there was a fancy dress competition in a school of a small town. Now over there, this store, which was called Just Fancy, was selling the dresses, as you can see on the screen. Now the parents went to this store, Just Fancy, to buy these dresses for their children. So as you can see, these dresses have various prices. And the parents bought these dresses for their children in different amounts or different quantities. So now the shopkeeper who had collected the money from the parents wanted to make some meaning of the money that he had collected. So he sold these many number of dresses. How many? If I count, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then again, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So he had a total of 25 customers come in and buy the various dresses that he had to offer. Now, as I told you, the shopkeeper wanted to make some meaning out of the money that he had collected. So he proceeded to find out the mean or the average of the money that he had collected. How will he find it out? He simply divides the total money that he has earned by the total number of customers. So how can we find out the total money earned? The shopkeeper simply adds up the individual prices of the dresses he has sold and the number of times he has sold them. So thus, he finds that the total money he earned is 21,950. And as we counted, the total number of customers who had visited his shop is 25. So he simply divides 21,950 by 25. And this gives him a value of 878. This value 878 is known as the mean of the given data. This mean is nothing but the average of how much each customer paid in order to buy the dresses from him. Now the shopkeeper notices one thing. He finds that this value mean is meaningless in this case. Why? Because there are very few dresses which cost higher than 878. Also, there are no dresses which lie immediately around this region and no customer has bought many dresses which cost around 878. So to the shopkeeper, this value as of now is more or less meaningless. So now the shopkeeper proceeds to find out another value which is pertinent to the given set of data. Now in order to do this, firstly, he arranges the data, that is the money collected from each customer in ascending order. So over here we find that the numbers have been arranged in ascending order. That is from the lowest price dress to the highest priced dress. So over here, 25 observations have been arranged in ascending order. Now the shopkeeper finds out what the middle value of this set of observations is. So over here, we have 25 observations. How can we find out the middle value for 25 observations? Again, we start counting. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now I arrive at this particular value, which is the 13th value. I will find that if I go on counting after the 13th value, I will get 12 more values. Let us find out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what do I have now? I have 12 values before this 700 and 12 values after this 700. So I can say that this observation, that is the 13th observation is the middle value. This middle value has a name which is known as median. 
what is the usefulness of median? With the help of median, the shopkeeper will be able to say that half his customers have paid less than 700 and half his customers have paid more than 700. Or in other words, with this value, he is able to equally divide this set of data into two parts, two equal parts. And this is what median does. It divides the data set into two equal parts. The only thing that is important to remember in case of finding out the median is that firstly, the data should be arranged in ascending order. And secondly, this median should always be the middle value of the given data set. So now again, we have considered the arrayed or the arranged data that was arranged in ascending order. Now over here, if you notice, you will find that certain dresses which have the same price have been bought by more than one parent. So now if I draw a simple frequency distribution table, what will I find? I find the dress which cost 300 has been bought only once. Similarly, the dress which costs rupees 400 also has been bought only once. So in a similar manner, I can say that the dress which cost rupees 500 has been bought twice. Now, if you notice closely, you will find that the dress which costs rupees 700 has been bought six times or by six for six children. So what can I say? I can say that this dress is by far the most popular among all the dresses. So when the shopkeeper finds that this dress is the most popular because it has been bought more number of times by the parents, the shopkeeper will manufacture more of this particular dress so that he can maximize his profits. So this particular number 700, which is the most common or most popular or in terms of mathematics, the most frequent is known as the mode. How does the mode help us? In this case, the mode is helping us as well as the shopkeeper tell which dress is the most popular because as you can see, having the highest frequency, it will tell the shopkeeper that it is the most popular dress. So in future, the shopkeeper can manufacture more of this particular dress in order to maximize his profit. So these three terms, mean, median and mode collectively are known as measures of central tendency. Mean is nothing but the average of a particular observation set. Median is nothing but the middle value of the observation set. And mode, as I just mentioned, is nothing but the most common or the most frequent set of data occurring in the total set. So why are these three collectively known as central tendency? This is because often data has a tendency to cluster around these three values. That is, let us say we have collected a huge amount of data for some particular region. Let's say we have collected the rainfall statistics for a particular region over a long period of time. So this data, if individually looked at, is not going to make much sense. But if we find out these three measures of central tendency, it will be observed that data is clustered or located densely around these three values. So for a person who wants to make meaning of a huge amount of data can simply take a look at any of these three values and that will help that person come up with a meaningful conclusion or an impression of what the data actually means. So this is how measures of central tendency, mean, median and mode helps us in giving meaning to a particular set of data.